Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the workers' meeting tonight. Thank you for your servants, the workers, everyone here present. We're asking, Lord, that you open our eyes to see what you have committed into our hands more than ever before in Jesus' name. Lead us to your truth and help us and empower us to present your truth and preach your truth to people around us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Romans chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 6. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it tells us, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Then in verse 9, verse 9 says, Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. In Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 17, Romans 10, verse 17. So then, faith, come by hearing and hearing by the word of God in verse 18 verse 18 but I say have they not heard yes verily their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. Tonight we're looking at the remedy. The remedy for sin, the remedy for all sinners, the remedy for the world, and the remedy for your world. Making the remedy known to your world. There's the whole world, but there is your world, the world around you, the world connected with you. And you know the remedy, you have the remedy, you have experienced the remedy, and you want to be an instrument in the hand of the Lord to make the remedy known to your world. We're looking at three points here in the message. Number one, presenting the remedy to every sick soul. The people who are born in were sin, laid down were sin. They're sinners and they do not know the remedy to be cured and the remedy that will kill them, relieve them and convert them from their life of sin. And it's your responsibility to take that remedy, to take the gospel and you present the remedy to every sin sick soul. Number two, proclaiming reconciliation through the ever sufficient savior he is a savior he died on the cross of calvary and because he died he can reconcile sinful men to the holy god and but we need to tell them we need to preach that we need to proclaim that proclaiming reconciliation through the ever sufficient savior number three is portraying the righteousness of expressive shining saints he has called us to be saints he has cleansed us and watched us and transformed us so that we can be saints unto god and saints shining the light of righteousness we portray that we preach that and we declare that to the people around us so that the grace we have the salvation we have they too can have and they too can become the children of god that will shine forth the grace and the glory of god let's come to number one presenting the remedy for every sick soul we're looking at romans chapter 5 and we're looking at it from verse 6 for when we were yet without strength 
There was a time we were without strength. We're saved now, we're born again now, and we have strength. Strength to live the way he wants us to live. Strength to declare the gospel. He has given us to declare strength to live a life that is free from sin. But there was, there was a time where we were without strength. And many people around us, many people in your world, many people connected with you, if they're not born again, they're still without strength. But they need to know, as we have known, that in due time, Christ died for the ungodly then in verse 7 it says in verse 7 for scarcely for a righteous man will one die but yet for adventure for a good man some would even dare to die and then in verse 8 she reveals to us but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were no more sinners if we're born again while we were we have been redeemed and we, are, we cannot say we are yet sinners that's why the holy spirit has recorded it through paul the apostle in the past was sinners that while we were yet sinners christ died for us this is presenting the remedy the solution the salvation the reconciliation the righteousness of the lord presenting the redemption to the people around us presenting the remedy to every sick soul three things we're looking at number one is the preaching of the remedy to all the ungodly the preaching of the remedy to all the ungodly and then number two is the power of the remedy when you apply a remedy let's say somebody is sick and you give him some things to treat the sickness that's the remedy and the remedy is supposed to have power efficacy that will take the pain and the sickness away now the gospel the gospel of the grace of God the gospel the gospel of atonement through the blood of Jesus Christ the gospel the gospel that comes to us and shows us what Christ has done and what we receive and possess through what Christ has done that gospel becomes the remedy and it has power the power of the remedy against all unrighteousness. Number three, the privatization of the remedy by the unfaithful. The unfaithful will take that remedy, hurt that promise, uh, that remedy, hide that remedy, keep away that remedy from the people who are really suffering. Such people who keep the remedy, who keep the solution, who keep the salvation message from other people, the unfaithful, they privatize that remedy. Number three, then, is the privatization of the remedy by the unfaithful. Let's come to number one. Number one is the preaching of the remedy. In short, is the preaching of the gospel. Is the declaration of the gospel to all the ungodly. Why do we declare that gospel, that remedy to all the ungodly? Because Christ died for all the ungodly. Because Christ gave his life to all the ungodly. Because Christ provided salvation, the solution to our problem. Christ provided that for all the ungodly. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 3. What Christ has done, what Christ has provided, it says, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received we receive it before we can present it to other people deliver it to other people we experience it be before we can declare it to other people for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died our sins according to the scriptures and then in verse 4 it says in verse 4 and that he was buried 
and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures all that he did for a purpose and those who are saved have experienced that already those who are born again have experienced that already that his death his crucifixion has provided salvation for us solution for us remedy for us because we have believed on him and that's what now we'll go out and preach and declare to other people sinners cannot save themselves sinners do not have the remedy to cough out or to produce or to create or to dig up or to have in any other way there is no salvation in any other but the salvation we have is in the lord jesus christ that's the gospel that's the remedy that's the salvation and we'll preach that to all the ungodly in first peter chapter 3 looking at verse 18 for christ also has once suffered for sins the just for the unjust that he the savior that he our redeemer might bring us to god we were separated from god we were far away from god by our sins the sinful nature the sinful practice the sinful lifestyle by our sins we were separated from the lord but christ now came as the messiah as the mediator to join us reconcile us unto god to bring us to god being put to death in the flesh but quickened made alive by the spirit and this is for the ungodly god is not choosing some and rejecting others in second peter chapter 3 reading from verse 9 second peter chapter 3 verse 9 the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but his long suffering persevering and patient towards us not willing that any should perish but that all shall come to repentance that all should have the remedy that all should be saved that all should escape the judgment to come the preaching of the remedy to all the ungodly look at number two there number two is the power of the remedy against all unrighteousness in romans chapter 5 reading from verse 8 but god commended his love toward us by himself on his own or the remedy originated from the lord himself now you understand somebody is sick may not be a scientist to produce to create to manufacture the pills or the medicine is ignorant of the remedy he cannot create that remedy he cannot produce that remedy the same thing with the remedy that redeems us and saves us from our sins we as human beings cannot create cannot manufacture cannot produce that remedy god in his power and god in his love god in his compassion god in his wisdom he only could have been the person to produce the remedy for god commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for the ungodly look at verse 9 in verse 9 much more than being now justified by his blood nobody could have demanded from god 
the blood of his only begotten son nobody could have thought about that that the blood of christ will be the remedy but god himself planned that way of salvation christ himself gave his only begotten son the only remedy much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him there is a wrath to come and it is only the blood of christ the blood of the pure holy righteous perfect son of god that could produce salvation not the works of your hand not the effort of any man not the sacrifice of any man could produce the remedy the salvation for anyone but the very blood of christ it tells us in hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 hebrews 9 verse 22 and almost all things are by the lord purged with blood and without shedding of blood the blood of animals will not do it now in the blood of christ without the shedding of the blood the blood of the lamb that taketh away the sin of the world without the shedding of that blood is no remission is no forgiveness is no righteousness and there will not be any redemption without the blood of the lamb in first peter chapter 1 reading from verse 18 first peter chapter 1 verse 18 for as much as you know that she were not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers verse 19 but with the precious blood with the peculiar blood with the saving blood with the cleansing blood with the patent blood with the redemptive blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot in first john chapter 1 verse 7 but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood don't forget that there's no gospel without the blood of the lamb there's no remedy without the blood of the lamb there is no salvation without the blood of the lamb and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanseth us from all sin we're looking at number three here number three is the privatization of the remedy by the unfaithful we're looking at ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17 ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17 son of man i have made thee a watchman unto the house of israel for ezekiel the house of Israel was its world for you, your community, for you, your environment, for you, the people all around you, that's your world. And for your world, that like he gave Ezekiel the responsibility to preach the gospel to all the people in Israel. He has given you the responsibility of preaching the gospel to your world, son of man. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth. Ezekiel. Your word cannot save any sinner, but you will hear my word, the word of my mouth. We need to tell ourselves, preacher, your opinion will not save any man. Your utterance will not save anyone. Your idea, your ideology will not save anyone your denominational doctrine will not save any man the word that saves is the word coming from the lord our words are not the remedy 
you can concoct anything together somebody has a deadly disease and then you use your human intelligence and you compound some things together chemically and give to them that's not a remedy the remedy has to come from the source of the people that know and then you just take that remedy you take those pills and you give according to prescription whatever preacher know that it is not your opinion it is not your idea it's not your ideology it's not i believe i believe it's not what you believe it's not your thought it's not your thinking that will save sinners the remedy comes from the lord son of man i have made thee a watchman unto the house of israel therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them a warning from me verse 18 in verse 18 when i say to the wicked thou shalt surely die that's the word you hear from the mouth of the lord you don't go to the sinner and you are so loving and you are so gentle and you are so, you have the milk of human kindness and you never think you don't want to think of death if i tell them that they'll be unhappy they'll be sad so i will not tell them thou shalt surely die i might ask them what if you died what if you perished i'm not saying you'll perish but what if this happens give the pill give the remedy that the lord himself had given the soul that sinners it shall die when i say to the wicked thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning you're too much of a psychologist and psychology prevents you from telling people the truth you're too much of a diplomat and diplomacy prevents you from telling people the real thing you're too much of a, a pharmacist that you are mixing this and mixing that and you are mixing your thought your idea and your proposition you are mis mixing that with the words of the gospel that doesn't save that's why you don't have a standing convert but give him warning no speakers to warn the wicked of his way to save his life the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will i require at thine hand that is if he perishes if he dies because you're being diplomatic and because you're too gentle and you cannot tell the gospel the way it is you don't want to offend anyone or hurt anyone so you don't want to tell them if you continue with sin without christ you will perish uh-uh you can't say that because you're too loving more loving than god to tell the truth if they died in their sins their blood will be required at your hand because you are hiding the remedy from them james chapter 4 reading from verse 17 in james chapter 4 verse 17 therefore to him that knoweth to do good that man is sick you know the remedy you have access to him you keep away you know to do good you know to present the remedy to them but you hide you keep away i took that medicine myself before and it was very bitter and i felt like throwing up and because of the way i felt and the things I, w I went through i don't want to give that remedy to that man because i don't want him to have the bitter taste repentance 
conviction turning away from sin pleading guilty being sorrowful for a sin being dejected for a sin I went through that myself having to make right a strong restitution I went through that myself I don't want somebody to go through that because it is painful well you know to you know to do good and you do not do it to him that knoweth to do good and do I think not to him it is seen Luke chapter 12 we're reading from verse 47 in Luke 12 verse 47 and that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes why he was proving wiser than the savior here is the one that says is wiser and we know wiser than solomon and now you are his servant he gave the remedy and provided remedy for you and go and tell all the unrighteous all the ungodly and give the, them this remedy they are high they are low they are educated they are illiterate they are men they are women they are young they are teenagers they are children boy girl tell them here is the remedy the same remedy for sin for every sinner on the face of the earth and then you are proving wiser I cannot tell them that I'm wiser than that and then you give them an anemic gospel a powerless gospel a kind of gospel that does not drive people to repentance and to faith in Christ the servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes i pray will not privatize the gospel we will not hide the gospel will not keep the true gospel away from the ungodly from the sinner from the unrighteous in jesus name we're coming to number two number two is proclaiming the reconciliation through the ever sufficient savior it tells us in romans chapter 5 reading from verse 9 from verse 9 much more than being justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him and then in verse 10 he tells us in verse 10 for if when we were enemies we're not born again we're no more enemies were sons and daughters of God, were followers of Christ, were lovers of the Lord, were no more enemies, were the friends of Christ now, were born again. Our names are reaching in the book of life, but there was a time we were enemies, enemies of God, enemies of righteousness, enemies of heaven, enemies of the gospel, enemies of the provision of the Lord enemies of the way of the lord but now we are friends it says for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life and then in verse 11 it says in verse 11 and not only so but we also joy we rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have received the atonement three things we're looking at number one repentance and redemption from his wrath we repent we redeemed from that wrath number two reconciliation and release from the wrath 
were reconciled unto God, and because of that, were released from the wrath. Number three, rejoicing for the removal of all wrath. Number one, number one, repentance and redemption from his wrath. In John chapter in Luke chapter 3, we're reading from verse 7. Luke chapter 3, verse 7. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come. There is wrath, indignation, judgment, punishment for the sins men have committed and that wrath is to come and if we're going to be free from that wrath we must turn away from sin and be reconciled unto the lord and be redeemed by the blood of the lamb look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance we turn away from our sins we've done that already and that's why we're not taking that same remedy that same message of repentance that's why we're taking that now to the people who are still in their sins to the people in your world to the people your contacts to the people your relatives to the people your friends to the people your co-workers you are taking that to them bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance we're looking at first thessalonians chapter one reading from verse nine first thessalonians chapter 1 reading from verse 9 for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we add unto you when you enter into somebody's house here is what you do to present the remedy to him is a sin sick soul and because the sick was sin and is going to suffer in all eternity if you don't tell him i'll be free you enter into his house you enter into his boss you enter into his environment and paul the apostle said you remember and you know what entering in we add unto you how ye turned to god from idols to serve the living and true God. There is a turning, there's a change, there's a repentance, and that has to happen so that they turn, they repent, and they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and they are saved. And then in verse 10, and to wait for a son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come when we repent turn away from our sins believe on the lord jesus christ have the remedy accept the remedy believe the remedy take in the remedy embrace the remedy because of that our wrath has been laid on him and now we turn and were delivered from the wrath to come look at number two number two reconciliation and release from the wrath romans chapter 5 verse 10 for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by 
his life his blood then his life the life he lived and he has given us an example how a saved soul ought to live how a reconciled person ought to live how a righteous redeemed soul ought to live and that by, by that life that he has given us and he gives us his righteousness having taken away our unrighteousness we are saved by his life we are looking at Colossians chapter 1 verse 20 and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him he is the remedy he is the solution he is the savior aside beside him there's no salvation he says by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him i say whether there be things in earth or things in heaven verse 21 and you that were you are no more like that you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now i see reconciled yet now as he reconciled second corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 in second corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 18 and all things are of god who has reconciled us to himself by jesus christ is the, that's the only name that's the only remedy he reconciled us to himself not by an angel he reconciled us to himself not by a man like Enoch he reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and he has given us to us the ministry of reconciliation we're now to go out to the people in our world in our community in our country and reconcile them the same way we were reconciled unto god reconciled them unto god by bringing them to faith in christ jesus we're looking at number three here number three rejoicing for the removal of all wrath in romans chapter 5 verse 11 romans 5 verse 11 and not only so but we also joy in god through our lord jesus christ is the remedy and is in that remedy through that remedy because of that remedy with joy and rejoice in God he brought us to salvation our joy is in him he gave us the new life our joy is in him through him our names are reaching in heaven our joy is through him and through him we have righteousness that is acceptable to god our joy is in god through him and not only so but we joy in god through our lord jesus christ by whom we have now received the atonement now not in the world to come we have that remedy now we have that reconciliation now we have that regeneration now we have that salvation and the evidence of that salvation right now and because of that 
we rejoice. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We had pardon, we had peace, we had partnership, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. The sin is taken away, the guilt is gone, the condemnation is gone. The pollution is gone. The power of sin is broken. We're justified by faith. And we have peace and pardon with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 2, it says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Point number three now. In point number three, portraying the righteousness of expressive shining saints as he brought us out of the wilderness of sin he has brought us unto the beautiful land of righteousness and saintliness. Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 7. In Romans chapter 1, verse 7, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, called to be saints grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ verse 8 in verse 8 first I thank my God through Jesus Christ always through Jesus Christ because that's the remedy is the only remedy is the effective remedy is the saving remedy is the healing remedy is the redemptive remedy the thanks we give to God those thanks have to come through Jesus Christ first I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. And your faith must be spoken of throughout your own world. The circle of your relationships, the circle of your contacts, the circle of your interactions we praise God through Jesus Christ for you because your faith your saving faith is spoken of throughout your whole world looking at three things here number one the rain that ruins sinners and society. Number two, the reign of righteousness in our soul and spirit. Number three, the reign of the righteous and a shining saints. Number one, the reign that ruins sinners and society. Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure 
of him that was to come because of Adam all the offspring of Adam inherited the sin nature and death rage that the rain that has ruined sinners and ruined society look at verse 15 in verse 15 but not as the offense so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one many be dead through the offense of one many be dead death reign verse 17 in verse 17 for if by one man's offense death reigned by one by that one sin of adam that went and came into the nature of every man born into the world the depravity came on everyone and that's the rain that has ruined all sinners and everyone in society verse 18 in verse 18 therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation condemnation came upon all condemnation range upon all verse 19 in verse 19 for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners that is the sinful nature came upon everyone thereby death reigned verse 21 in verse 21 that a sin has reigned unto death sin has reigned unto death that the sin that the reign that the rule that's the despot that has come to reign on man and brought devastation and death and damnation upon everyone let's look at number two here the reign of righteousness in our soul and spirit christ has died christ is the remedy and the power of sin is broken the presence of sin is dealt with the pollution of sin is cleansed away and because of that now righteousness reigns in our soul in our spirit let's come to romans chapter 5 verse 15 the second part of verse 15 it tells us much more the grace of god and the gift by grace which is by one man jesus has abounded unto many now whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved verse 17 the second part in verse 17 much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one jesus christ we were ruined by adam but now christ has come and he came into our lives and because he came redeemer he came our righteousness he came the one that released us from the penalty of sin now he reigns in our lives and we reign in life through him and then in verse 18 the second part even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life 
and then in verse 19 verse 19 second part so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous now you can come to the lord and he will reign in your life and you will reign through his redemption and remedy in jesus name we're coming to number three here number three is the reign of the righteous and his shining says you will reign i will reign we shall reign through that remedy our redeemer in jesus name let's look at jeremiah chapter 23 we're reading from verse 5 jeremiah chapter 23 verse 5 behold the days come says the lord that i will raise unto david a righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth and then in verse 6 it says in his days judah shall be saved and israel shall dwell safely and this is his name whereby he shall be called the lord our righteousness the lord our righteousness he took our sin on himself and then he imputed and imparted his righteousness unto us and because we have his righteousness we shall reign in life in jesus name daniel chapter 7 verse 27 daniel chapter 7 verse 27 and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and dominions shall reign shall shall serve and obey him will be with him when he comes to reign we will reign with him daniel chapter 12 verse 3 this opportunity we have today that we have the remedy we have applied the remedy personally and now others who are still suffering as sin sick souls we take the remedy that we have benefited from we take the remedy to them and they are saved and we turn them from their sin their damnation their ruin and we bring them to the lord and they live in righteousness and they too were in daniel chapter 12 verse 3 and they that be wise shall shine at the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever the question is have i turned anyone to righteousness the question is have you turned anyone to righteousness the question is has your message provided the remedy to the sinners as your message brought many people to repentance 
and righteousness as God by grace through you turned anyone to righteousness are you reigning in life are you causing other people to reign in life so that when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and then we who remain alive will be caught up together with them you'll be among those people you will go up in the rapture you will not stay down below in the rapture and when God in Christ through Christ begins to give out rewards you will not lose your reward and if you have turned many to righteousness you will shine you will reign forever and ever be it confirmed in your life in jesus name let's rise up now and present our lives present ourselves before the lord lord grant me grace that i will shine i will preach i'll give the remedy out to the people in my world i will turn by grace many to righteousness so that on our final day the day of reckoning i will shine as stars forever and ever 